I would like to welcome E Dragon. She is now an official member of the commission. She got sworn in today. So very exciting. All right, great, Brianna is here. So I'm just gonna go across my screen for the roll call attendance. Sharon Parsons. Here. E Dragon. Here. Mary Carney. Here. Courtney Meyer. Here. Brianna Quinn. Here. And I, Diana West, am here. All right, great, thank you. Next up is to approve the minutes from the July 23rd meeting. Do I have a motion to approve? So, so, so moved. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion, corrections, additions? All right, we'll call vote to approve. Sharon Parsons? Yes. Brianna Quinn? Yes. I'll skip Dragon because they were not on the commission yet. Mary Carney? Yes. Courtney Meyer? Yes. And I, Diana West, vote yes. All right, thank you, everyone. Next up, we have a guest here, Jeffrey Harris, to talk about the retaining wall at Skinner State Park. Uh, Jeffrey sent around information that they want to continue the historic retaining wall that is stone and remove the uh, wooden <clears throat> uh, guardrail that is there. Jeffrey, do you have anything else you would like to share with us? Uh, can you all hear me? Yes. Okay. Yes, uh, well, just to... to uh... Get some clarification and just to expand a little bit on the project um as you know um a little bit uphill of from the halfway area on skinner state park road uh, heading up to the summit there's a section of the road where there is a existing poured concrete retaining wall on the downhill side of the road and uh beyond that as you know, many of you who have traveled that road have probably noticed over the past 15 years or so that section of road has been slowly slumping downhill a little bit. Um, you can see the guardrail slowly tipping over a little bit. And it's uh, we did do a major repaving project there, and the paving at that location is really starting to crack and, and collapse. So we've realized that we're at a critical point where we really need to address that and extend the retaining wall. Uh, at that location so what we're doing is we're planning to add another uh, about 52 feet of retaining wall uh, uphill of the existing concrete poured uh, retaining wall i don't know the exact date of that poured concrete wall um, i don't know if it was original to the road construction or I'm, I'm guessing it was a later addition but um, i don't know that, of its exact date of construction uh, instead of going with a, a poured concrete wall uh, to match that, we're going with a modular concrete block wall system that uh, you may have seen in some highway construction uh, contexts um, around the state or around the region. Uh, it's a lot more cost effective and uh, easier to construct than a poured concrete wall. Uh, and it, uh, from what I've been told, it, it, it takes less time as well. The wall is going to basically butt up against the, the old wall and extend 50 feet up the road. It will be about 10 feet in height. Um, but from the perspective of the driver, you really will not see this wall at all. Uh, it will be capped by a layer of uh, asphalt millings, uh, which is essentially uh, kind of a, a gravel uh, look to it that will be beneath the new uh, wood guard rails. And uh, the wall will be all below that. And to really see to see it, you really have to would climb have to climb down the the, the steep slope there to uh, get a view of it uh, of it. Um, due to the steepness of that slope and just given its location, there are no public trails that go back behind that area. So there really will be no public visibility of, of this wall. So the fact that it, it does not um, match the appearance of the older uh, concrete wall. Um, for us was was not a really of a concern um, that wall will feature a kind of a 
a rusticated uh, face to it. Uh, that's not just the typical plain concrete wall that you sometimes see in those modular walls. So it will have some te texture to it um, that will, will reflect the, the rugged nature of, of the exposed ledge uh, in that vicinity. Uh, I'm assuming that with time, as you can see with the existing wall, it'll, it will patina, it will have moss, lichen growing it over time. Uh, there'll be vegetation growing up around it. So uh, any part of it that is visible that you know, initially I'm sure it will be kind of a glaring white <laughs> or light gray addition to the landscape. But with time, um, I'm sure that will start to patina away a little bit. I can share the pictures that you sent. Oh, around. great. If you have those lined up, I can yeah, share them to your team. Yeah, so this is the existing wall, and then that's the wooden guardrail that they want to replace. Here's another angle. Um, so as you can see, it has that nice patina on it of the moss. Looks mm -hmm. nice and weathered. Um, down here, another angle. And then you can kind of see the road, as Jeffrey described it, along with the wooden guardrail, uh, steep edge. And then the last picture you gave us was an example of what you want to do. And mm -hmm. so the way you described it is that this would be going down sort of the face of the mountain and people wouldn't really even see it. Correct. Mm -hmm. okay. So do people have thoughts and opinions to share? I was well, on that oh. On that road, not too long ago, and I noticed what the cones and where it was doing that. And I would say that I really wouldn't plan on going back until it was repaired. <laughs> I mean, not doesn't look very healthy. Nope. Yeah, this do sounds you know, like. Oh, oh sorry. sorry. Go ahead. Brianna. Oh, I was going to say, do you know if the planned construction is similar to what they just did on Route Nine, kind of by the Garden Center? They put in a um, retaining wall. Um, I forget which road it's right on the corner of, but it's where they were doing all that construction, like right before Hadley Garden Center. Um, Mill Valley. Yeah, yeah, on the corner of Mill Valley Road, where that little tiny house is, they put a retaining wall. Of, I think it's a modular construction. Do you know if it's going to be similar to that? I'm not familiar with that location, uh, but I know that this type of modular wall has become a, a, a popular means of construction for uh, retaining walls and highway construction and other. Um, you know, big developments where you have uh, you know, major slopes you have to con contend with. So it's was, likely it's a similar similar okay. construction type. Okay, that's, I mean, I don't know if you guys have seen it um, over there on Mill Valley, but I was pleasantly surprised, I think, by how that looked. I thought it would look worse and it kind of, um, I don't know, it's not bad. Yeah, I think when, when these are initially built, they really are visually striking just their newness uh but i think uh, as i mentioned i think but with, with time they, they do start to blend in a little more once they've got you know accumulated a layer of, of dirt and weathering on them that helps a lot well this mainly sounds like a safety issue so in my opinion from a historical perspective this is completely fine to go ahead it sounds like no um historical elements will be affected by building this wall uh does do any other commission members have an opinion on how it'll affect the historical aspect of the area no i in my in my opinion it's my first meeting right but um that <laughs> it sounds like you all have really mitigated the fact that it won't be visual like to the experience of those visiting um, and driving or, or hiking on the road there that there aren't any trails in the back so that it won't change the kind of experience that people are having when they visit the park so that's great mm -hmm. I agree with that but even I think it's more important that if that road isn't fixed whether it's visible or not nobody will be able to enjoy Skinner State Park in the future. And it's just, I mean, it's really falling down in there. Yeah, better safe than sorry. <laughs> yeah, it's preserving our access to, to the mountain, which is present yeah. history. Yeah. I'll also just quick, quickly mention that uh, this has been added to a, a, a uh, pre planned project to replace the guardrail along the roadway. Um, and many of the locations were replacing the existing wood rails and wood posts with a um, 
a, a new safer system that has steel posts with wood railings on them. So it'll be very similar in character to the existing, um, except that they will have the steel post behind them. But given the, mm. the size of the wood rails, uh, those steel posts really won't be that visible. So we're, we're trying to keep maintain that, that uh, rustic character of the parkway with these new guardrails. So you'll, you'll be seeing more a lot of those along most of the stretch of the road heading up, heading up to the summit. Great. Thank you for sharing. Uh, so it sounds like we're all in agreement that we are in support of this project and that we give you our blessing to move forward with it. Great. Thank you. Um, if you want to, it would be helpful if you could maybe um, either through a quick letter or an even email to the Massachusetts okay. Historical Commission. They're, we have submitted a project notification form to them for this project, mm -hmm. and they're always uh, interested in hearing from the local historical commissions on uh, their opinions on these projects. So. Okay. Uh, if you had time to send a, a brief note summarizing your, your comments, that'd be great. I appreciate that. What can you give me a deadline? Uh, let me see when we submitted this. The typical Mass Historical Commission typically uh, has a 30 day review period okay. for project notification forms. So let me see when this was submitted to them. Uh, let's see, that was, it was sent out on September. 5th, so they probably received it around the 7th. So they still have another couple of, couple of weeks to review it. So if you got them got it to them within the next uh, 10 days, I think that would be sufficient. All right, thank if, you. If we're sending it out to them, do you think we should have an actual motion? I was just um, gonna make that recommendation. I move that we um, give our blessing to this project. Do I have a second? Second. Thank you, Courtney. Any further discussion? Okay, roll call vote again. Sharon? Yes. Brianna? Yes. Yes, definitely. Courtney? Yes. Mary? Yes. Dragon? Yes. And I, Diana West, vote yes. So motion carries. Okay, anything else you need from us, Jeffrey? No, I really appreciate the opportunity to uh, present this to you and appreciate your support. Thank All you right. so much. Thank you. Okay, have a good night. You too. Thank you. All right, next up, uh, Jennifer Sanders James, who's on the call, reached out about the CPA application that the town has submitted for a municipal needs study of the Goodman Memorial and the Town Hall. So Jennifer has requested that we write a letter in support of the project. Uh, Jennifer, do you wanna tell us anything more about the project? Hi there. Um, so this is a project that we really need to make sure that we can continue to function in Town Hall and adequately use the Goodwin. As y'all know right now, the Goodwin is not really being utilized to its potential. Hadley Media is there and um, the Hopkins Foundation has a little sh setup in it, but that is it. Um, we would like to be able to preserve the beautiful woodwork and the historical character of the building, but also use it to support our boards, committees, departments in the building and the same with Town Hall. We need to have better use of space while preserving the space. And, and I don't believe the wood paneling in my office is historical. <laughs> so I'm hoping that gets to come down. Um, but I know that these two buildings with Russell School really form a foundation of the historical center of town. And I think it's important that they are preserved and continue to be used. Um, and we do have in the uh, financial breakdown, the quote that we received is for a historical preservation specialist to help guide us through the process. And, you know, this is just the study, but the goal is, is after the study, we'll be able to continue onward. So I'm asking for your support. This is Carolyn's project, but, you know, since she has left mm -hmm. us, I've stepped in mm -hmm. and am pinch hitting. Is that it? Pinch hitting? <laughs> yeah. So, I would, I would love a letter of support if y'all 
felt that it was something that you could. And mm -hmm. I'm happy to answer any questions. So I was not able to stay at the CPA meeting last week. Did the CPC vote to support the project? They yes. did. They, they did vote to support it. And, um, but they told me I had to come see y'all. <laughs> I, I knew all of y'all. So it was like, okay, a different Parsons is the biggest change for me. <laughs> oh, this is the same. I was at CPC as well. No, I think she means Amy. Oh, you mean Amy. Amy. Okay. <laughs> yes. Normally I, I'm at town meetings with Amy, not with you. But yes, you were at the, the CPA as well. Does anybody have any questions or comments? Uh, uh, how long is the municipal needs study good for? I'm thinking of feasibility studies in the past are only good for one to two years. Well, yeah. that's it. It is, it, it would be two or three years at most, but once we have it, um, I, I will continue to push for this. Um, and you know, we have to wait for the new town administrator, but, um, we are busting at the seams at town hall and we're not, but we have, we have a lift. We meet the requirements to be handicap accessible, but we can do better. The town can do better. And part of this is an elevator assessment for both buildings. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important to be accessible to everybody and not put the elevator in the worst place possible to ruin the historical character of the building. Mm -hmm. um, because uh, the previous thing they had looked at for the good one, I'm still struggling with why they wanted to put the elevator where it destroyed all of the beautiful the woodwork. <laughs> yeah, it was yeah. quite, well, to be fair, they didn't destroy the fireplace, but, but everything inside of it, yes, they completely wiped it out. So I just, I think we can do better and I think we can be mindful of that. Um, but yes, Courtney, there is definitely a limited time frame. but we've added 10 new employees to town hall and one mm -hmm. new department and, you know, and, and y'all know this, um, but y'all lost your office space, you know, historical, y'all were, you know, unfortunately to have an HR department meant that historical lost their space. Y'all have a very nice filing cabinet <laughs> and, and, and that's, and that's not fair. Y'all, y'all do work for the town and it's not just you, it's the ZBA, it's the planning board, it's conservation, like all of these boards lost their space to keep the files that you have to maintain as part of public record and asking you all to keep them in your home is not fair in my opinion as a as a board as a board member for another thing um, and i have their files at my house i know that i would like to have my space so those are things that i'm aware of and conscious of and i think it's important to move this forward as in any way we can while providing the best service for the town So I know that the Russell School obviously is not move and ready. And I know that there's a study going on with that as well. Are there other reasons why Russell School is not included in this study? Because of the fact that it has its own study going on right now. Yeah. Okay. And the town administrator, I think at one of her last meetings, or maybe uh, Chief Mason had mentioned it, but there's actually talk with five colleges right now about um, looking at space use and stuff. Ooh. So while Russell School is not a part of this, it's definitely a part of it. And I think, I mean, AHF is going to present the study to everybody with the options, right? And then it'll be up to the talents people how it goes. But I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, I love Russell School. The top second floor of Russell School, I really would like it to be my office. It has the <laughs> best view. Mm -hmm. um but that's that is why courtney it's because it has its own study and it has a you know a firm working on it perfect thank you mm -hmm. any other questions for jennifer not a not necessarily a question but i i mentioned i noted that jennifer mentioned about um how her office had uh, kind of new walls put up. And I think that's what people that are newer to town might not be aware of is how it was mm -hmm. um, retrofitted, update, updated, um, but really did lose, unfortunately, a lot of its great old character. Mm -hmm. um, 
many years ago while trying to make more office space. Um, so if if there's any way in the future to kind of bring that back, um, it it really, I, I know my my dad and, and my grandma just used to talk about it so much about how, how beautiful of an old space it was before it was redone. So thanks for noting that, Jennifer. If y'all ever can convince Gary Berg to let you peek in the attic, it is the the wood up there is absolutely amazing and beautiful. And it's an attic. It's the, the best part of town hall is the attic. <laughs> um, but yeah, I know that it had to change, and I'm and then I don't want to mislead and say that we're putting it back how it was. It still is going to have to be an office, mm -hmm. but I think we can be mindful of that, and I think that. Um, at least on the outside of town hall, um, we can make sure that that stays the same and we can do a better job inside for sure. Jennifer, is there a plan of use already in place for what you would all like to see happen in both buildings or are you just kind of going off of the feasibility study? We're going off the feasibility study. We want them to help us decide who stays in town hall, who goes to the good win, and what that, you know, does does it make sense to, to put all the financial people in the good win? Does it make sense to put conservation and the building inspectors in the good win? Like we don't know. So we want them to come in and sort of tell us what makes sense uh, on how we break it up. But for sure, the basement of the good win, I, I definitely have plans for the file cabinets to go down there. I have, I have very big plans for that. I just, I have a question because I thought, I think I vaguely remember that maybe around 2019 or so, um, there already was kind of a general plan about what departments would be placed in kind of what buildings. So I'm just wondering kind of what shifted with that. So the plan from 2019 was done before 2019 with the Municipal Building Committee. And since that time, We've sold North Hadley Village Hall, so we moved Parks and Rec in, so we needed an office for them. Conservation became a full-time position. We added uh, human resources, and then we added a payroll assistant. We had an assistant treasurer. What was decided by then is not what's real anymore. And then you throw in the fact that we also have a full-time Board of Health now, two employees in that office. And we've added two people additional in the office on a daily basis to the building inspector's office. We have just grown and we are bursting at the seams. And, you know, we've played a bit of uh, musical offices trying to, to, to get everybody into a place. Um, for a while there, Joan and the payroll assistant, the payroll assistant literally sat at a table beside Joan's desk and stared at her all day while they were working. Um, that's just not, you know, it's, it's not a good work environment. It, it has to be weird to have somebody stare at you all day. Um, so we just, we need, we need to shift and there's probably a better way to do it. And that's, you know, that's why there's professionals that do space need studies. Mm -hmm. Thank, you, is, for, thank yeah. you for that background. Sorry. Just wanted to acknowledge her. No, absolutely. And the Municipal Building Committee was very thoughtful about it at the time. It just, you know, unfortunately, as Hadley sometimes does, we didn't move on it. And, you know, <laughs> now, we have, now we have to move on it. And um, we, we need a solution. Hadley is very unique in that we are still using our original town hall as a town hall. So uh, it... I'm excited to see that we are doing a municipal needs study to still be using our town hall as a town hall and to be mm -hmm. able to use our other historic buildings in town uh, for town purposes. Uh, lots of towns have moved to build a whole new building. So uh, I'm excited to see what the um, historic preservation specialist has to say. And um, I'm hoping that we can arrive at a good solution that works for the town and still keep the historic character of the buildings. Absolutely. So in the interest of time, I'm gonna call for one last round of comments if anybody has any. I just wanna weigh in with my Edward Hopkins hat since I have this opportunity to say that we love our space <laughs> and I, we know we might get thrown out of there, but we really hate to see that beautiful room busted up for you know bathrooms and 
elevators if that can be avoided if we get thrown out we'll deal with it but it's just so beautiful right. in there the windows are gorgeous the fireplace so save that room i that yes that's that, what i, I read I, books I, days on end when i was little too so it's a, it's I, a I promise room. i promise and and you know smith they they got rid of their reading room their beautiful reading room with those beautiful fireplaces in there. Um, when they had the redesign by Maya Lin, they got rid of them. So I'm I'm particularly sensitive to keeping a nice wooden, wooden reading room. So I I promise I will advocate. Yay! <laughs> thank you. Um, right. I I'm in support of this study. Um, I just I'm sure Jennifer, you already know this, but I imagine you might get some pushback because everyone's saying. Um, you know, how many studies do we have to do on these buildings when nothing's going to happen? So like, you know, going in and knowing exactly what's expected and how much time um, to anticipate and all of that, I think would be really helpful. Okay, I will, I will take that feedback and try to have more solid information. Mm -hmm. All right, do we think we need a motion or are we in agreement? I mean, this is typically our, our job to provide letters of support for historic preservation projects with CPA. Mm -hmm. All right, then, um, Jennifer, I will work on that. You said before town meeting, but I will try to do that earlier than later as town meeting is now further out than originally anticipated. Yes, things, things have definitely changed, but thank y'all all. And I'm sorry if I spoke too long. No, not um, at all. Oh, I, I appreciate the support and I will do my very best for this. Thank you. We appreciate you. So much. So exciting. Yeah. I'm happy about it. Thank, right. you. Thank you all. Thanks. Have a great night. You too. Yeah. I get to leave a meeting early. I just don't know what to do with myself. <laughs> <laughs> Relax. Yes. All I'm right. Moving into old business, uh, preservation plan summary CPA application. It was approved unanimously by the CPC. Thank you so much to Brianna for all of your work on the application as you did basically all of it. So I appreciate that. Uh, town meeting has been pushed out to November 14th. Uh, since this is such a nominal amount, I really don't foresee pushback. I mean, I don't foresee it not passing. There might be one or two people who have to say something. There always is. Um, so do we want to move forward with booking Chris to come? And what does our timeline look for that? Are we looking to book him post town meeting now that it's been pushed out or should we talk to him prior to that? Just assuming that it will get passed and try to book a date shortly after town meeting. Um, why don't you gauge from Chris what his availability is? Good idea. December is also not the best month to um, get started. Right. I was worried about not being able to see as much as we would maybe hope to see if, I don't know, like, I don't know. I feel like spring obviously would be like a great time to kind of assess our inventory, but um, yeah, I'm not, I just I wanted to feel out what you guys were thinking. Cause I know initially we had talked to him the last time about potentially doing something right after town meeting and, you know, he had been open to that, but now that the meeting has been pushed back, I think we're kind of like right on the line of that window of time. Mm -hmm. So I can, I'm happy to reach out to him um, and see what his availability is and just kind of let him know what's going on mm -hmm. and that we assume that it will be passed. Um, but just let him know that the meeting has been pushed out and see what he has to say, because maybe he'll say with no leaves, we can see better. I don't know. You know, who knows? <laughs> I guess it would just be like, if he thought this was going to be a really long day with the sun setting earlier, is yeah. that prohibitive or at that point would we be inside and it wouldn't matter anymore. Yeah, that makes sense. I'll just cover all the bases when I reach out to him and just see what he wants to do and, what what his plan is and you know I can also let him know like what we're asking for financially and just be like here's where we're at um what is mm -hmm. what is that bias like you know initially we had spoken about 
just the preservation plan summary in the day and everything like that, but just be like, here are our funds and you know, what mm -hmm. does that look like for you? Yep. Sounds good. Thank you. Any other questions about the preservation plan summary? One thing that did come up in the meeting <clears throat> with the CPA was Annie Morris Friedman wants to come, which I'm kind of like, okay, fine, you can come. <laughs> um, but I don't know, like, maybe we have to check with town hall what the rules are of, do I have to post this? Like it's open meeting law. Um, like when we do this tour, like I think we have to consider all those logistics because if we end up with a lot of people that could be an issue in terms of driving around and seeing things. Um, but how do other people feel about inviting other people to join us? Well, yeah, I mean, even in the meeting, they spoke about renting a bus, like we were talking about renting a bus. I threw that idea out <laughs> Yeah, there. you threw that out there. And then they were saying like, logistically, no, everyone should just go in a train of cars. But then we were saying that is kind of also a weird thing to do. So, but everybody, pretty much everyone across the meeting was asking if it was going to be like an open tour and if anybody should come and we kind of didn't really have a good answer for that. So what do you guys think is feasible with that? It could really slow us down if he usually uses a full day, you know, everyone's going to have comments and questions and, and we just won't get as much done. I mean, it's, but it's nice, a nice idea. Depends know, on it's not much. supposed to be like it's not supposed to be like a friendly tour like we're not asking yeah yeah we're working <laughs> yeah we could bring alex and have him film it and then watch oh, it that's actually a really good idea mm -hmm. that's genius because then we can say it's a private tour but it's being filmed so that it'll be posted publicly right i right i love that idea i do too Absolutely. like he does with the easter bunny <laughs> he sits yeah. in the truck with him that's very but, clever I mean, and that that allows people to see what we're seeing, but doesn't have all in the commentary. Way. That would be right, difficult. Yep, I agree. Perfect, Mary. Thank you. <laughs> Hope Alex agrees. <laughs> You're like, oh, I have enough to do. He seems tireless, so it should be fun. I think that's a perfect, perfect use of Hadley Media. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> you should absolutely I hire him to do that. I think in terms of open meeting law, what might be the issue is sort of our gathering afterwards, not necessarily the tour. It was described to me that we need to post it as an open meeting if we are deliberating. So if on the tour, it's just more of informational, then that's not a deliberation. But the afterwards part, it very well could be deliberations. Mm -hmm. I right. Will ask him when I reach out to him, what his thoughts are on that, because he may just say, it's just going to be me presenting all of this information to you and like what's going to happen moving forward. So that may not be an issue, but he would probably know best of any of mm -hmm. us, whether that would be a problem. So why wouldn't we post? I mean, I don't think there's a lot of people who go to the website to be like, oh, what's going on today? You know, <laughs> I think we would still post it but when I posted the un the sign unveiling mm -hmm. um Jessica Spinknable said oh that should go on the the um town announcements not the calendar because it's not a meeting and so when I asked about the open meeting law rules she said you're not deliberating on anything and I was like oh, okay and I, I'm also sort of hearing what you're saying, Courtney, and that it's across that bridge when we get there, if we had a bunch of interest in coming, mm -hmm. what that would look like and deal with it. Because I think Andy says he wants to come. Okay, that's one more person. And after that, I mean, I could see maybe two, three yeah. other people interested. Like, I don't think we're going to get droves of people. Right. There's like, there's two sides to that coin, as I learned at the last meeting that we had, which is that. A lot of those people that, or the very few people, I should say, that will show up know a lot about the town. So they may actually be very helpful to the preservation plan summary, but also there's going to be like a lot of talking involved there. So then we may be there for a lot of extra hours, right. but it might actually be really useful. Like I feel like I learned a lot in that last meeting with the people that did show up um, talking about the town. So I, what do you guys think about that? Good, bad, could go either way. 
I think, like I said, we, we cross that bridge when we come to it. I think people who would show up, we have good enough relationship with them to mitigate um, sort of that over talking kind of aspect of it, like just reminding people of the time constraints. Um, something that can be helpful is if we have a written out agenda and have sort of timings next to each thing to just keep us on track, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Or we can say like, please no, no comments unless it relates to whatever we're talking about. Just ask. I would think he would be able to certainly help with the timeline as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, any other comments about preservation plan summary? All right, our other CPA projects, the signs are done. The unveiling went great. We had a really good turnout, uh, including two select board members, which was wonderful. Thank you everyone who was able to make it. Great speech by Diana. Oh, thank yes. you. It was moving. I loved it. I wrote it and then I was like, maybe I should actually like read the signs to make sure it fits. <laughs> I was like, wait, I think this is on the walking tour. <laughs> <laughs> um speaking of the walking tour where are we with that so um let's see who made edits Brianna and Mary made some edits um which I incorporated into the document then I sent it to Sherry to do another read through um and she sent me a couple small edits today um which I will incorporate tomorrow um I wonder if a new person dragon would be interested in reading it before we send it off to print i would love to read it and <laughs> see what's there i think that'd be great thank you for thinking of me yeah also, and it's good to um uh it's good also to look at the you know the layout and all of that uh, to make sure everything's lined up um because i've been looking at this for what two years now and i might be missing some things so I would love to look at it again quickly because there were some pages at the end that I missed and not even for editing purposes. I just feel like I was learning a lot from reading <laughs> that. So I want to finish it. Oh, that's funny. Cause the, yeah, I noticed that there were a lot of edits in the first half and then there was like nothing at the end. <laughs> yeah, no, I only got through like the first two thirds and then just had no time, but I, I would really like to finish it. Even if it's just like a quick read. I didn't make it to the end either. So yeah. maybe someone should start at the back. <laughs> I did. And I, oh I, only found, I only found one in the beginning the other two were like page 30 and 40 so all right and i so didn't i didn't edit commas comma rules are not to be worried about anymore I, I looked up comma rules because i was like i felt really stupid i'm like am i <laughs> do i remember english classes <laughs> I just, there's no good reason to edit common rules. <clears throat> All if right. we have a great decision who reads it, so be it, but. Mm -hmm. All right, so Dragon will look it over and then it sounds like we're almost there. Mm -hmm. Great. Any movement on the driving tour? Um, I spoke to Alex at the sign unveiling and he and I just have to find a time. I'm hoping sometime this next week, I just um, have to shoot him another email, but I'm hoping that we can find a time literally within the next week to make the first whatever demo or just do some of it and see how it goes. So back to school time is very busy for him, I guess, but we're trying to find a morning that will work. Wonderful. And do we have a male voice yet? Not yet. I have some leads on that, but I'm hoping to find someone more local so that I don't have to wait for someone to come from California to do that. Well, could they record it on their end and then send it to you? They probably could. There, there are, um, there are like several programs now where you can do that if people have recording studios and the specific person I'm thinking of does have one. So I, but he's also in Massachusetts on occasion. So I was hoping oh, okay. he was just going to like be here for work and then it would work out. But if it doesn't, um, I'll see if he can just do it on his end. Awesome. 
Okay, house plaques. Irene isn't here, so that's her item. So we will wait until she's back. Uh, commission membership, excuse me, commission membership. As we know, Dragon has joined us. Very exciting. Uh, but I just want to throw out a little reminder that this is going to be my last year. So I hope someone is thinking about the chairperson role. And no, if you want to talk about it with me. You can't, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> nope we're all just gonna say sorry you can't leave us too bad well if you want to talk to me about it we can chat okay standing agenda items use of the west street common mary told me she had not been able to gather together that information yet so we're still working on that sorry everyone next month i promise all right, 101 East Street. Um, as far as I know, it's still there, right? What's the other day? Okay. It it's still there, but they're obviously not doing any active yard work or made or landscaping. So I had emailed Cyrus requesting that he take photos of the house and the outbuildings and put them in a shared Google folder, which I shared with him. He told me he would, but as far as yesterday when I looked, there were no photos. I also was reached out to on Facebook by someone who grew up in the house and she offered to share photos of when she lived there. So um, I also sent her a Google folder to do that with. Um, nothing is there yet, but I could um, ask again if she was still willing to do that. Uh, Courtney shared with me that there are no updates on the Lions Club Fountain on the Common or Railroad Street. Uh, do we have any updates on the 250th anniversary of the American Revolution? Not yet. Um, obviously, I've been thinking, I had thought I would really work on that. Um, the DAR is going to start with, with uh, uh, nine, well, let me try this again. <laughs> 2025. Wow. And... Um, because there were there were war heroes, you know, as early as Lexington mm -hmm. and Concord. Actually, if you go, want to go back even further, the the Boston Massacre; those those men are considered war heroes as well. So, um, so we're gearing up for twenty twenty five, but most of the state stuff seems to be focusing in twenty twenty six at this point. Um, but I I will. I haven't seen that much about it yet, but just knowing that most of it, the state stuff seems to be more focused on the Declaration of Independence than the actual beginning of the war. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this does segue nicely into the next agenda item, which is that the Porter Phelps Huntington House and the Hadley Historical Society have submitted a grant application to the Massachusetts Office of Travel and Tourism for 250th programming. They requested a letter of support, so I edited the one that I had submitted for the CPA application that they did and sent that along to them. In classic fashion, they asked me for it about a week ahead of the deadline, so hence why I wasn't able to bring it to the full commission before I sent it off. Um, so there is movement, at least. Um, hopefully, we'll learn more soon and learn how we can perhaps support those efforts Uh more so than just a letter. Um, as far as I know, there isn't a town committee that has been put together or anything along those lines. Um, but there is something that is going to happen. Any other questions about that? I know we had briefly discussed potentially trying to make the plaque project to go along with that. Mm -hmm. um, so hopefully next time if Irene is here, she has some information on that so we can kind of get the ball rolling if we need to apply again to the CPA um, for funding for that, if there's any funding needed. I, I don't know if you can read the title. It says Historical Papers, Old Hadley Chapter DAR. Um, my neighbor finds all sorts of things in his attic, and this has a list of all of the Hadley um, men who were in the Revolutionary War, where they're buried, 
um, all sorts of things like that. Um, so this was done, this, these records are from uh, the early 1900s, but I'm sure the list was taken from something earlier. Um, so I just wanted to say that I, I have, I'm gonna make copies of this stuff before I give it back for sure. Um, a lot of it, a lot of it's just stuff that they took out of Judd or, or mm -hmm. mostly, but um, it's just stories about Hadley. It is not their minutes or anything like that. Um, but it, it does say something about the fountain on the common, and I don't think it says it's Lions Club. Hmm. Um, but I'll go back and check on that because it says it does mention the fountain in the 1950s on the um, on the common. So I'll check, see what that yeah. was about. I don't know if it would necessarily be talked about at the October Betty Allen chapter DAR meeting that's coming up. Um, but I was looking forward to attend. That's like at the end of October um, in terms of gearing up for 250th stuff. But um, I could try to put a little plug into it as well from that angle as well. Locally. I don't, I don't know, Sharon. Yeah, I am in the Betty Allen chapter. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm a new member. Um, uh, well, but new old member. I used to go all the time with with Bertil um back in, in the 90s um to their meetings. So just really looking forward to kind of rejoining them. Well, this this meeting uh often conflicts with the DAR meetings. Yeah, it'll it'll we'll do our best, right? Take turns. Okay. Anything else we need to talk about that didn't make it on the agenda? All right. So typically we meet every other month. So we'd be looking at November, but do we need to have a meeting in October to finalize plans for um, the preservation plan summary? Um, do you want me to just see what Chris says and I can just um, keep you in the loop about that and depending on what he says, go from there or do people want to schedule a meeting? Well, do we want to tentatively schedule October and November and if we don't need October, then we can just skip it. Um, when is this DAR meeting you guys are going to because I don't want to conflict with that. And there are five Tuesdays in October, so hopefully we can find one. I don't have the date on my calendar, do you? Yeah, October 22nd is when um, Eileen gave me. All right, so um, that leaves us with the 15th or the 29th. If we then think ahead to November, we probably want to meet on November 19th since November 26th might be too close to Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. So do we tentatively want to book the 15th of October and then November 19th? I'm seeing some nods. That works yeah. for me. Great. I, I won't be able to meet the week of Thanksgiving. For sure. Yeah, that's why we would, were saying the week before. Thanksgiving's on the later side this year. So you, you'd rather do the October 15th than the later October date by Halloween. It's probably easier to do earlier, right? I'm thinking that because then if we're meeting November 19th, it's it's a pretty quick turnaround. I mean, I suppose you can make that argument for right now too. Um, I mean, that puts us one, two, three weeks away. I mean, I guess it's the same difference, but the 15th, the meeting on the 15th might not happen. So um that is the plan I'm leaning towards right now. Yeah, makes sense. Okay. All right, everyone. This was a nice and efficient meeting. I appreciate that. Um, if you have any questions before our next meeting, let me know. Feel free to reach out. Uh, and any last words before we adjourn? Just thank you, um, Courtney and Brianna, especially right now for getting something done for us at this point in time. Um, it's really great. And Diana always gets stuff done. Thank you. <laughs> it's so good to see those, those two projects come to fruition. 
I'm looking forward to hopefully getting it passed at town meeting and have, you know, meeting with Chris, because I think it will be a good day for all of us to learn a lot and, and move things forward. It will. There, it's especially if we make it clear that without something like this, the Historical Commission has no say in historic preservation in town. And I mean, e that even came up at the CPC meeting. Some people thought that that we had some kind of power to stop stuff from happening. And I said, we have none, absolutely none. Yeah, let's just hope that this is a jumping off point for hopefully other things that we need, demolition delay bylaws and, you know, who knows, we don't want to get our, ahead of ourselves, but I feel like this is a good start. So hopefully it gets passed and we can get the ball rolling and have something, have something going before Diana leaves us <laughs> so that the rest <laughs> of us know what we're supposed to be doing. <laughs> Wow, balance all those balls, juggle all those balls efficiently. I believe in you guys. <laughs> I make a motion that we adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Aye. Yes. Aye. All right, I'm not going to.